Hey everyone, it is Josh here with HostGator. Today I'm going to show you how to take automated backups of your user content right through your WHM in your VPS or dedicated server. Making sure you have up-to-date, valid backups of your content is one of the most important things you can do in web hosting, and I'm excited to show you how easy it is today. As always, if you like the content that we're making, you can give it a like, leave us a comment with what you'd like to see next, and subscribe if you want to see more. But if you're ready to go, let's get started. We'll kick things off today in our WHM, and before we get started with the fun stuff, I just want to note that this process that we're going to show today is only valid for your VPS or dedicated server. If you have a reseller WHM, you're not going to be able to go through these processes. We have other videos that I'll link in the description below that'll tell you exactly how to take a cPanel backup if you need to. Now, in order to check out our backup options, we're going to go over here to the left-hand side in the search bar, and we're going to search for backup. This will show you all the backup options that you have on your server. It's really important to note here that your server may not be configured to take backups automatically, so one of the first things I recommend customers do is check here in the backup configuration just to make sure you have backups on hand if you ever need them. The first thing we'll do here is click on Backup Configuration. This takes you directly to the Backup Configuration page. The first thing you want to do is check the backup status. You want to make sure that Enable Backups is checked here to toggle backup activity. So we'll check that, and as you can see we now get some options down here in the bottom. Once we've made sure that our backups are enabled, the first thing it's going to do is ask us to choose our backup type. As you can see down here in the global settings, we have compressed, uncompressed, and incremental. You'll notice that the default backup type is compressed, meaning it's going to take a zip or .tar.gz style of backup. It's going to use less of your disk space, but it can take more time for it to actually create these backups. You'll also have the option to do uncompressed or incremental. Whichever you choose is completely up to you, but I like to recommend the compressed as the best option. If we scroll down just a little bit further, we can see we have the option to check the available disk space. This is really important as depending on how large your content is, your backups could take up a large amount of disk space. If you have this option enabled and you set a percentage, it's not going to take a backup if your disk space is less than that percentage amount, meaning you'll never fill up your server and you won't have any loss of services. I like to leave this at the default, which is 15%, but you're welcome to adjust this percentage to anything that you need. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we can see the maximum destination backup and maximum backup restoration timeouts here. Now, depending on how large your content is, it can actually take quite a good amount of time for it to backup and restore. So if you'd like to specify the amount of time that your server can take to try out those backups and restorations, you can set those seconds here. Once again, this is an option that I like to leave directly as default because none of my accounts are ever that large, but it's completely up to you what you'd like to set. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we can set our schedule and retention. These are really important as it will allow us to tell the server exactly when to take backups and how many we'd like to keep. As you can see here, we have options for daily, weekly, and if we scroll down just a bit further, monthly as well. I'll scroll back up to the top here and we'll set our daily backup schedule first. As you can see here by default, it's got Sunday as an option, but I can select each day of the week if I'd like to, and I can also tell it how many backups I'd like for it to retain. Retention essentially means that it's going to delete the oldest backup and keep the newest ones, depending on how many you set here. Now, it's important to think of how large your accounts are and how frequently you'd like to have them backed up, because this can really fill up your disk space incredibly quickly. I know that I like to have my backups run for daily on Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and I like to keep one retention of each. You'll note down here that there's a section for strictly enforcing retention regardless of the success of the backup. This is selected by default, and I'll leave an article in the description below with a bit more information on exactly what this means, but essentially it means it will take partial backups and keep them regardless if it's successful or a full backup. We'll leave that selected and my retention set as one for daily, and we'll scroll down to weekly. I'd like this to happen on a Sunday as well, so I'm fine with that. Scroll down a bit further and we can choose our monthly backup, noting here that we can choose the first day of the month or the 15th day of the month. I'd like the 15th, so we'll use that and uncheck this one. Moving down just a bit further, now we can choose the files and users that we'd like to have backed up in this server. The first section you'll see here is backing up user account, which is exactly what we want to do. If we click here, I can actually select the users that I want to do. We'll do that in just one second, but I want to show you a few of the features down here below as well. We can choose to back up accounts that are suspended through your WHM. We can back up our access logs, our bandwidth data, and we can use local DNS if we'd like to as well. I'm going to leave these just as they are, and I don't feel like backing up suspended accounts, so I'll leave that unchecked. Now let's find out exactly which users are going to be selected for our backups. We'll click Select Users. Here in our backup user selection, we can tell it exactly which users we want to backup or not backup. As you can see, I've got five different accounts here on this server. I've got backups enabled for all of them. If you'd like to disable or enable it, you can simply click the toggle button here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that enabled for now. You'll also see a legacy backup system here. This is something that cPanel used to use and is going to deprecate soon. I have that disabled now because I don't want to use legacy and current backups. Now that we know exactly which accounts are going to be backed up, let's head over to the backup configuration again. Down here just a little bit further, we can see that we have the backup system file selected. This is going to support restoration, so I always like to leave this selected. Scroll down just a little bit further and we can see that our databases are optional for backing up as well. We can see that the per account only option here is selected by default. What that means is that every single database that you have in your cPanel is going to be backed up as soon as these run. 
You also have the option to back up the entire MySQL directory in varlib MySQL, or you can do both, whichever you prefer. The next option that we have here is to configure the backup directory. This is basically telling the server exactly what folder you'd like to store these backups in. The default is forward slash backup. I like to leave it just like this unless you'd prefer to have them backed up in a different directory. You can also specify exactly where you'd like the temporary files to be stored for your staging directory. I like to leave this in backup as well. No changes here is good for me. We'll see options down here at the bottom for retaining these backups in the exact directory we just specified. And there's an option here for mounting a backup drive as needed, but this shouldn't be an option on your server, so no need to worry about it. Now that we've got all that taken care of, the last thing we need to do is save our configuration. So we'll go ahead and click save. See a green success bar up here at the top? It means we're good to go. Now it's important to note, if you just set your backups, you are going to have to wait for the day specified for them to run until you can actually do a restore. But once you have backups on file, you can use a backup restoration right here, restore any of the content that you need in case something ever happens. And that about wraps it up for WHM backups in your VPS or dedicated server. As always, if you like the content that we're making, give it a like on YouTube, let us know in the comments below what you think, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks y'all!